Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of your favorite algorithm channel. My name is Ryan Powers, and today I'm going to be taking you through longest valid parentheses. So this is the third parentheses problem that we've done. We've done valid parentheses. We've done generate parentheses, and now we're going to do longest valid parentheses. So this is a permutation, a permutation of uh, the original problem of valid parentheses, but this time we're looking for the longest valid sub string, right? The longest valid substring of valid parentheses within the whole string of parentheses. So uh, let's introduce the problem. Given a string containing just the characters, uh, opening parent and closing parent, find the length of the longest valid well-formed parentheses substring. So we have some examples here. So given this input of two closes and one open, um, the output should be two, right? Because the longest substring is this one pair of two uh, parentheses. And then um, here, in example two, we have another string of parens, and the output should be four because this uh, this group of two um, well-formed parentheses sandwiched in the middle uh, here is our answer. Anyways, I will say we could use uh, valid parentheses. We could take our function valid parentheses, um, and we could use it and modify it in a way to where it would just return to us the longest uh, valid string of characters at uh, every single um, iteration through every index of the string, right? We could start at the first index, you know, modify our valid parentheses function to just go through that and give us the longest one we can find and then do that at every index. Um, but we don't wanna do that, right? Because that's not the most efficient way to solve this problem. Uh, we wanna do this in one pass, right? So. That's the goal today. The goal today is to solve this um, this func or solve this algorithm in a uh, big O of n time. So that's what we're going to be doing. As always, I uh, I I suggest that you try to solve the problem first on your own. And if you get stuck, or if you just want to see how I solved it, then uh, go ahead and check out the video. So if you're ready to get started, come with me to the whiteboard. On the screen here, I've drawn a string of parens and um, also their corresponding index, uh, index numbers. So this over here, um, all the way to the right, this is an 11. It's not a stray set of, <laughs> of um, per, er, quotation marks. Um, so um, how are we gonna solve this problem? Well, when we did valid parentheses, we used a stack to solve the problem. When we used generate parentheses, we also used a stack to solve the problem. Uh, we used the call stack in a recursive manner, but we used a stack nonetheless. So what do you think we're going to use to solve this problem? Well, that's right. You guessed it. We're going to use a stack again. But this time, um, unlike in valid parentheses, where we're just tracking what the matching pairs of parens are, we need access to two different pieces of information. And let's identify what those pieces of information are. So if we look at our string here, we can identify where our, um, where our longest substrings are. So let's go ahead and do that. So our first one is gonna be right here. And what's going to block this off, right? It's gonna be this kind of stray closing paren. So that's going to end that uh, substring. And then we'll look and we'll see, okay, seven and eight is gonna be our next longest one or our next substring, not necessarily our longest one. And it's gonna get closed off by this nine here. And then we'll look down the line and we'll see our last one is here. And our lengths are six, two and two. So how could we use the information we have in front of us to solve this problem? Well, we need to know what types of parens we have to be able to decide whether or not we're going to push or pop, right? But we also want to know what the index values are. And the important ones are right here, right? So six and nine. So when we get done pushing and popping everything onto the stack, the parens that are going to be left onto our stack, our stack is going to look like this in the end, right? So we're going to be pushing in the index values instead of the, um, instead of the parens themselves. So then we can index into our string and figure out at, um, whether or not what type of paren it is. But when we push everything onto the stack, our stack is going to end up looking like this. And um, what is that going to tell us? Well, we know if these are the parens we have left over, then we know that everything between the bottom of our stack and six was our first string value. And everything between six and nine 
was our next string value. And then everything between nine and the end of our string was our last string value. So using the index values um, on our stack, we can, we can get the information of how long each substring was. And that's the strategy we're gonna to use to solve this problem. So let's go through a round of using this concept, this idea to solve this problem in the next video. On the screen, I have our stack at the top uh, represented as an array. And we have our string um, with our index values above each of our parents. And here at the bottom, um, let's quickly go over the strat or well, we've kind of gone over the strategy, but let's go over the implementation of the strategy that we're going to use. So if you see, we're going to be tracking a max here. So our max is going to be equal to the max of whatever our the difference between that looks like a one, but the difference between I our current index and whatever is on the top of our stack. So that is going to be the, the substring that we're going to be measuring. And we're gonna take the max of that um, calculated value and our, um, and, and our max, our current max. And we'll be tracking that here at the bottom. So what about this negative one uh, business that we have going on up here? Well, why do we have a negative one there? Well, if our stack is empty, then we need to basically add one to our, uh, to our um, substring length. And um, an easy way to think about this is if you look at this right here, well, the difference, between, um, the difference between one and the bottom of our stack is going to result in a value of undefined, right? Because there's nothing in our stack when it's empty. So the difference, we can't call it zero, right? Because we have a zero index. So if our zero index is, is hanging out here on our stack, then we would want the different, and, and we were on two here, then the difference between two and zero would be the two prints if they were valid, and that would be correct. It would be a length of two. But if we don't have anything on the stack and we say that it's zero, then we're gonna get a, a wrong value. We basically need to, um, we need to count the zero as being part of uh, our substring if our stack is empty. So we need to subtract one to account for adding this uh, zeroth index um, to our substring. So negative one is basically going to be our undefined or our representation of an empty stack once we get there. So let's go through a round of solving this problem and updating our max along the way and see how this problem is going to work before we go ahead and code it out. So we're going to start at our first index here, and we're going to push zero onto our stack. And we're going to look, and uh, we haven't popped anything yet, so we can't really measure a string, right? We don't have a valid string yet because we haven't popped anything. We're going to move on to one here. And so one is going to uh, pop this off the stack, right? So our i value is one. Our new top is negative one. So our new max, which is going to be a value of two, and our current max is zero, right? So that's gonna be two, and we're gonna take that value. And we gotta pop this stuff off the stack. So we'll pop this off the stack, and we'll move on to our next value. So our next value is gonna be two, which we will push onto the stack. And then we'll move on to three, and we'll push that onto the stack. Uh, three. And we still haven't, uh, we still can't pop anything off the stack yet because we pushed two open prints. So we'll move on to four. And four is going to pop three and four off the stack. So our current value is going to be the difference between four minus our new top after we pop this stuff off the stack, which is going to be two. So four minus two is going to be two. And our current max is two. So we won't update our max because it's, uh, it's not any bigger. Um, so we'll move on to our next index. So our next index is going to be 5. And that is going to pop 2 off the stack. So our new, uh, our new max is going to be the difference between 5 minus we are now at the bottom here. We're now uh, have an empty stack, so minus negative one, which is gonna be six, and our current max is two. So we're gonna update to six. 
and we'll move on to the uh, next index in our uh, string. So now we've come to the six, and we're going to push six onto the stack. And we can't do anything with it, and so we're going to move on to seven. So seven, we also can't do anything with it, so we're going to push it onto the stack. And then we'll get to eight, and eight is going to pop seven off the stack. So eight's popped seven off the stack. So we can calculate um, a new substring. So that's going to be eight minus six, which is two. And our current max is six. So we won't do anything with that because it doesn't uh, increase our max value. And we'll move on to the next value. So we'll move on to nine. And nine, we'll check the top of our stack. Six is a closing paren here. And nine is also a closing paren. So it won't do anything. So we're going to push that onto the stack. And we'll move on to our next value. Our next value is an open paren. So we'll push that onto the stack. And we'll move on to 11. 11 is a closing paren. So that's going to pop 10 off the stack because 10 is an opening paren. Um, so 11 was a closing paren, 10 was an opening paren. So we would pop that off the stack. So our current value is i11. And the new top that we just generated, the new value that's on top of our stack is this nine here. So 11 minus nine is two. Our max was six. And uh, it doesn't update our max, right? So the answer to our problem was six. So you can see that this is actually a pretty uh, simple variation of valid uh, parentheses, right? We're just adding another wrinkle to this problem. So what is the time complexity of this problem? Well, the time complexity of this problem is a big O of N, right? We are going through the entire string. Um, so the size of the string is going to be what determines uh, the runtime of, um, of, of this algorithm. And so we're just gonna have to go through it one time. So that's big O of N. And what about the space complexity? Well, you can imagine that if we didn't pop anything off our stack, we'd push every single item into our stack. So that's also going to be a big, uh, big O of N for space. So now that we have a good idea of the strategy for solving this problem, let's go ahead and implement it in code. So well, let's initialize the stack. And in our stack, we're going to store negative one. And like we said before, the reason why we're storing negative one is it represents our empty stack. If zero is part of our substring, then we want to include it as part of the substring, right? So we need negative one to represent, um, represent our empty stack. And we'll initialize max to be zero. And then we just need to loop over our string. So we'll let i be zero. And while i is less than the length of our string, then we're going to uh, keep, keep looping. So um, we want to grab the top of our string and we'll store it as a, we'll do it as a const. So we'll, um, we'll, get, we'll grab the top, of our, the top of our stack, which is just going to be um, the, index, the last index of our stack. So that's going to be stack.length minus one. And now we need to check uh, this index in our string. We need to check to see, is the top of our stack an opening paren? If it's an opening paren and our current, um, and our current uh, index is a closing paren, well, then we can pop that item off the stack. So we want to check to see if our top is equal to um, an opening paren and our uh, current index, which is just going to be the string at i, is equal to a closing paren. Well, then we can pop an item off the stack. So we'll run stack.pop. And now we need to grab our new, uh, our new top. So our new top is just going to be equal to the same, uh, <laughs> the same thing. So it's going to be the last index in our stack. So that's stack.length minus 1. And now we need to update our max. So our max is going to be equal to the max of i minus our new top of our stack and our current max. So if this isn't the case, if our current, uh, if our current um, value does not pop something off the stack, well, then we just need to push it onto the stack. 
So we're on stack.push and we'll push on I. And then we just need to return our max at the end. So just to do a little bit of recap, um, we initialized our stack with a value of negative one to be sure that we're including zero as part of our answer uh, if our stack is empty. We initialized a max variable to be zero and we're gonna loop over our string. At each iteration, we're gonna grab the top index of our stack and we're gonna check to see is that index, if it's an open paren and the current index that we're iterating over is a closing paren, well then that's gonna pop an item off the stack. So we want to run stack.pop and we want to grab the new top index in our stack. We're going to subtract our current index or we're going to subtract from our current index that new top index because the distance between those two things is going to be our substring. And we're going to take the max of the current substring and what is currently our max. So um, if that's not the case, then we just want to push that index on, uh, onto our stack. And then here at the end, we're just going to return the max. So let's see if we have any bugs. Okay, great. Well, let's run that again. <laughs> okay, so LeetCode's not gonna let me do that. Let's run it one more time. Okay, great. So uh, 80 milliseconds. Um, so that doesn't look great. But uh, as I stated before, leak code is really trying to make me look bad right now. So we're just gonna grab the best solution and we're gonna run it against our code like, like I've done for the past few videos. Okay, so let's grab the best solution. So we'll grab this one percenter here. This one looks pretty good. Uh, it says it runs in 56 milliseconds, cool. Let's go back to our solution. And we'll paste that in here. All right, see, see how they did. Okay, great, we're tied. So our solution is just good. Again, it's the best solution on Leco. If you guys care about that, it makes me feel good when I see that. Um, but anyway, uh, as always, um, I think this is a really good example now that we've done these three parentheses problem is just kind of like a pattern recognition, right? So these paren problems are really indicative of stack problems, right? Like we have two items that have to come, uh, come together uh, to, to, um, to create a value that we're, that we're tracking, right? And, and we, we always need to evaluate the last thing that we did. So anytime you see a parens problem, it's very likely that you're going to need to stack. I mean, we use a stack all three times for all three parent problems. So if you see a parent problem in the future, that I think is where our minds should go is, hey, maybe we should be using a stack to solve this problem. So anyway, I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one.